नमस्ते वेलकम बैक टू अवर् चाने आयुर्वेद थ्री सिक्सटी सो इन कंटिन्शन वित् दि एन सी ई एस एम गेजेट नोटिफिकेशन डेटेड फेब्रवरी सिक्सटीन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू वी आर् मूविंग इन टू द पार्ट टू सो इयर वी आर् डिस्कसिंग मेजरली दि एक्साम रिलेटेड पैटर्न और दि असिस्मेंट पैटर्न ऑफ बी एम एस स्टूडेंट्स ड्यूरींग देर अंडर ग्रैजुएशन सो इन दि इनिशियल वीडियो वी हेड सीन रिगार्डिंग द बेसिक्स और यू कैन से दि एंटर Uh, the notification in nutshell if you have not seen that kindly watch that and come for this video so we have already seen in the previous video that on 16th of february 2022 there was a notification from ncisc ncism as a gazette notification from the government so this is applicable since the day of its launch that means since 16 february itself it is applicable so whatever batches are there after february 16 that is starting from the students who have joined this year this professional year so they are going to be under these regulations so in the previous video we had seen the brief summary of all the notification now we are going to see in detail regarding the assessment pattern so the pattern of study in the new model are divided into mainly two parts one is the main program another one being electives so main program is nothing but what the usual students are studying in classroom and in hospital and even labs under various subjects so which are learned and within four and a half years under the direct supervision of teachers in their respective college so other electives are nothing but the chosen topic by the student so minimum 3 per professional course is made mandatory so depending on the interest of the student depending on certain interdisciplinary approach so the student can choose and these are mainly online related courses so i'm going to come come to that later so based on these two uh, patterns the student is going to study is bms that is four and a half years and one year of compulsory internship so during this time the student needs to be assisted regularly that is start, starting from the day of his joining up to the examination ultimately even the five hours so these one and a half years should be the time when the student should be analyzed for the performance so for achieving this what ncsm has done is it has divided one professional course that is one and a half years into three parts the first six months is called as first term second six months second term and third six months is called as third term so for example a student joining on october 1st 2023 will be having first term from that part up to the march 2024 so the during this six months what the assessment pattern will be like two times uh, or three times you can say the teacher will be assessing the student periodically that is called as periodical assessment so what is this periodical assessment periodical assessment is nothing but just like you can say see this slide here it is very clear a student will be given certain class test or he may be asked to make a model or he may be asked to present in a class or he may be given a public work based on this subject or he may be given certain problem based assessment so certain of these parameters are set by the ncism a teacher is free to choose any of this so based on this you can say the student will be assessed initial uh, three parts that is the periodic assessment and at the end of 6 months the student will have to face the term test it has been called as term test tt is called as term test that is nothing but the college will be conducting the internal assessment it is it is otherwise called as internal assessment so from the institution side the internal assessment will be done for each subject and each 6 months there will be a certain portion which is covered based on those topics internal assessment questions will be given and certain time limit and the student will be able to Clear, uh, easily clear that of course if he studies it well that is called as term test so this is in relation to first 6 months now from april 1st 2024 in that same example the second term starts for that particular student and it goes up to september 2024 so during this 6 months again the same pattern follows so the teacher will be covering the next 40% of the syllabus initially 30% in the first 6 months next 6 months 40% of the syllabus so in that period the teacher will be again taking periodic assessment again multiple methodology are there anything can be adopted again at the end of second term that is exactly at the end of one year the student will be given again second term test which is which can be called as second internal assessment 
so this will be common for all the students of the class so that is called as second term so after that the third term the remaining 30 percent of the syllabus will be completed initially and then there won't be any kind of you can say term test but personal or periodical assessment will continue periodic assessment will continue for the remaining portion what is covered and it could be the revision classes whatever it is it is left to the teacher who is concerned with that subject ultimately those reports will be collected so at the end of one and a half years the student will be giving the university exam till now it was only institution level the institution is conducting all these things at the end of one and a half years now it is the term, turn of university to conduct its own exam so the question paper and all evaluation methodology will be followed as per the university rules so that is called as university examination here you can see ue that is nothing but uni university examination now based on all these things the students performance will be assessed so after the university examination that is uh, university examination is not just theory not just like paper it includes even other things like practical and other we'll be discussing that later so this is how a student entering into bams will be assisted from the day of joining up to one and a half years so during this phase multiple sub tests tests examinations and practicals all those things will be able to assist the student so now coming back so we'll go to the assessment pattern okay here you can see what i mentioned regarding periodic assessment and term test conducted by you can say periodic assessment is at the teacher level particular subject teacher level or it could be the department level term test could be the institution level so these two are called as formative assessment and then the other university examination that is called as summative assessment so this is how this assessment of student will be done under the new regulations so in the final examination the student will be having internal assessment marks so in the practical part there will be a uh, provision for internal assessment marks so before entering the exam only student will be getting internal assessment marks how that is on the basis of the performance in periodic assessment and term test so this is very important the student who is not concentrating well during the one and a half years and at the last one month he wants to focus there so his internal assessment may be bad so which may affect his result so that is the direct message here so this is a, a rough sketch of how the examination i mean the internal assessment will be given marks imagine internal assessment of a subject is 30 marks out of the total 400 marks for that paper 30 is for internal assessment imagine so in that case how to calculate that 30 there is a rough uh, uh, like idea given here so all the three periodic assessments will be calculated for 15 marks and then average will be taken there and it will be converted into 30 and term test at that particular point of term six months will also be calculated out of 30 then average will be taken of these two so in that way first term you'll be getting out of 30 similarly second term and third term you'll be assist for an average of 30 and 30 ultimately when you take the average of whole term all whole professional bms three terms you will be getting the internal assessment marks for that particular subject so to make it easy i'll just take an example like imagine a student gets 11 marks in the first term i'm talking about first six months now 11 marks first periodic assessment out of 15 and 13 in the second and 11 in the third so average you take you get 12 and when you convert it into 30 it is 24. now the term test at the end of six months what that subject teacher is going to take from the institution level you imagine he gets 22 out of 30. now this 24 and 22 will be calculated added and taken average there so the first term that subject internal assessment marks for that student will be 23 year similarly i have given some random numbers here that's how you take the average of second and third uh, the term assessment marks total term assessment marks so now you can see in the third term there is no provision for term test because that is almost the time for your university exams that is why there won't be any term test whatever you get in the periodic assessment the same thing will be kept for as the term assessment ultimately this student what i have given here the average random numbers so he is going to get or she is going to get 21 out of 30 if she performs in this way and if the paper has 15 internal assessment marks it will be just half of this the average will be taken for 15 the student will get 10.5 out of 15 if it is a single paper subject so this is how the student will be analyzed from internal assessment point of view now when the university examination is going to be conducted before that only student will be given this internal assessment marks his marks will be sent to the university now at the end of the term uh, the professional bms 
देर विल बी अ थियरी एग्जाम फॉलोड बाई प्रैक्टिकल सो वॉट डज थियरी मीन देर विल बी मल्टीपल सब्जेक्ट्स इन ईच प्रोफेशनल बी एम एस एज वे ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड फर्स्ट बी एम एस प्रोफेशनल बी एम एस इंक्लूड्स फाइव सब्जेक्ट्स मेजरली सो अमॉंग दैम ओनली संहित अध्ययन विल हैव वन पेपर सो विच मीन्स इट हैज ओनली हंड्रेड मार्क्स पेपर रेस्ट ऑल द सब्जेक्ट्स आर हैविंग टू टू पेपर्स सो संस्कृत एंड आयुर्वेद इतिहास वन संस्कृत एंड आयुर्वेद इतिहास टू पदार्थ विज्ञान वन पदार्थ विज्ञान टू सो इन दैट वे द थियरी मार्क्स विल बी रेस्पेक्टिवली टू हंड्रेड एंड हंड्रेड एंड देर विल बी प्रैक्टिकल असिस्मेंट यू कैन से क्लिनिकल और प्रैक्टिकल असिस्मेंट सो देर देर आर मल्टीपल ऑप्शन देर यू कैन सी सम सब्जेक्ट्स मे हैव सिंपल प्रैक्टिकल सम सब्जेक्ट्स मे हैव क्लिनिकल असिस्मेंट लाइक इन फ्रंट ऑफ पेशेंट्स विल बी असिस्ट सम ऑल दी सब्जेक्ट्स विल हैव वाइव अगोस सो नाउ दिस इज ए मेजर चेंज इन दी न्यू रेगुलेशन earlier there were there was no viva for all the subjects only few subjects were given provision for viva vos what is viva vos viva vos is nothing but oral answers oral question and answer session which you used to have in your uh, like you can say lower primary classes or primary classes even here secondary classes so here also it is considered as the oral examination which is otherwise called as viva vos so here each subject is having specific marks for viva vos and then you can see a column there electives so electives is nothing but what i mentioned the chosen subject by the student himself and based on certain parameter 10 10 10 30 marks will be awarded for that student in the entire first year second year and third year separately will be given 30 30 30 so regarding electives i'll not be taking here i'll be taking a separate video on that because it requires certain explanation now internal assessment what i already mentioned out of 15 for single paper and out of 15 for the out of 30 for two papers now what you need to remember is in the case of sanskrit and ayurveda itihasa the viva vos the question answer session will be restricted to sanskrit so itihasa paper will not have any oral questions it will be only theory now in this way when you get the total marks of each subject ultimately the first professional bms student will be facing the examination out of 1700 so now what is a pass mark 50% separately in theory and practical now imagine you are getting uh, in padartha vignana 180 marks in second paper uh, you are getting 40 so 120 it is pass more than 50% imagine you are getting 40 in first paper and in second paper you score 70 because you studied well so there you get 110 again that subject is passed because overall you have cleared that subject by combining both the papers similarly for the practical part also you need to get 50% minimum so theory is 200 so remaining part will be out of 200 if you see carefully internal assessment and electives will also will be already given for you you know how much marks you have already scored in internal and electives so remaining part you can uh, clear easily if you know regarding your preparation earlier so this is in relation to first professional bms similarly second professional bms will have the similar examination but the thing is subjects are more here one subject is more and number of papers will not be uh, uh, too much because agada tantra and samhita adhyana will be having again single single paper the rest of the subjects two two papers so as earlier i mentioned the remaining part will be the same so a second year student will be facing the examination out of grand total 2100 similarly for the third year which can be taken as the year uh, professional bms where maximum number of papers are there especially kai chikitsa itself has three paper and certain subjects have one 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 paper so research is given just for introductory purpose so there won't be any viva there so it is just given for 50 marks so that students get a basic idea of research to move forward into post graduation or clinical research methodology in the future so apart from that rest of the subjects will have viva separately and the student will be facing the entire examinations for 2550 marks in the third professional bms so this is how exams will be conducted and if you ask me the questions for 20% of the question paper will be mcq based whereas 40% will be short answer based and 40% will be long answer based now the university is free to decide regarding how to frame short answer whether it is 2 mark or 5 mark or 3 or 4 so it depends on the university but ultimately the paper should have 40% of short answers and lengthy maybe 10 mark question or a 12 mark question depending on university so but ultimately 40% should be the long and long answer type questions but the thing is the entire subject should be covered in these questions that is the usual rule so after that electives what i mentioned how to score how to calculate the marks in electives that is each year 30 30 30 marks so that will be dealt in detail in 
the coming videos so now passing marks i mentioned already 50 percent separately in theory and practical it is not combined usually what happened earlier what used to happen was earlier in since many years ago a student used to get 70 marks in both paper one and paper two together now in the practical usually he gets 150 so combined 220 is considered as pass but later the rules change and it is continuing even now that the subject theory should be separately cleared practical should be separately cleared that is how you are going to assist a doctor so that is absolutely fine and no issues with that so that is how so practical means not just a laboratory practical or something like that it includes many things like it could be a practical session clinical examination it could be the viva vos internal assessment electives all these things combinedly we call it as practical so practical part will be 200 marks in certain paper in certain paper it is 100 so in relation to summative assessment that is university uh, examinations the viva vos and the practical part will be conducted by two examiners not just one two examiners so one internal examiner will be there who is within the institute who is from the within the college or institution and other in, uh, like invigilator is from another college of the same university so he is called as an external examiner so external examiner will be coming along with the internal examiner combined will be uh, taking the viva vos so that is how the student will be assist in the practical part now the important change what ncism has made is there will not be revaluation re system as soon as you get your final marks that will be the final there is no change you cannot question the uh, marks whatever you obtained no revaluation re now there is a slight query regarding recounting whether recounting is allowed so will be take will be covering that once the clarity is made but right now there is no revaluation re what is revaluation re the examiner taking your answer sheet again entirely going through it from beginning to last it is not allowed because two examiners will have already corrected evaluated your paper and that too uh, in most of the universities right now it is converted into online mode so in the soft copy they are evaluating you and that is why uh, university or ncism doesn't feel like revaluation re is required so this is in relation to the new regulations results will be declared as distinction and first class if the percentage is more than 75 and 65 respectively and if a failed student scores this many, this many amount of marks in the supplementary exam then these grades are not considered now in relation to the promotion and something called as odd batch so we'll be covering it in detail because that is a subject which usually students get confused so these parts i'll be covering it in the coming video and it is very important to know regarding odd batch because once a student enters into something called as odd batch then the psychological effect of the same will be there for a longer time which may even uh, impair the ability of the student and even uh, you can see may go into depression and such things so it is very much important for a student to know regarding how not to fall trap for odd batch so that he can complete the syllabus uh, course as soon as possible and get uh, get a degree and ultimately get into his dream job so that is how we can say hot batch uh, should not be the option a student looking for so in the coming videos we will also be covering other details like internships electives and what is very much important from faculty point of view what are the changes ncism has clarified here so in this way we have completed today's video so if you like the content kindly like share and subscribe to our channel